Hello everyone, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you may be. Welcome to the Eye Photography uh, Monthly Photo Quiz. Um, we decided to kind of give it a bit of a change of uh, venue this time. Normally we, we do this, uh, well primarily we do these uh, quizzes kind of monthly for our Eye Photography Plus members and they have their own like private Facebook group. Um, but we thought we'd just mix it up a little bit for the summer. Uh, last month we did it on Facebook um, so everyone can watch. We thought now we haven't actually done a live stream to youtube for i think it's about a year i think we did our world photo day critique last yeah that'd be last august actually so yeah we're kind of pretty much bordering on a year since we last did a live stream on youtube which is pretty bad but we get kind of so taken about by so many different things and projects and courses that we're doing all the time we don't always get to do uh, live streams that often um at least not kind of um, public ones all the time so it was just nice to kind of break things up a little bit and bring more people in to show us what you to show us to show you what we do even um but yeah we're gonna have a bit of fun this evening um i know we're a couple of minutes early from when we said we would start um so i'll give it a moment or two and then just kind of explain really the rules if you've never played one of our photography quizzes it's about that pretty straightforward anyway um, but yeah, if you can make sure, if you can hear me, if you can see me, see the screen a okay, we'll just do a little technical checks beforehand. Um, just let me know in the comments, that would be absolutely fantastic. And thank you so much for joining us. And let us know where you're joining from, that would be even better. So I'm just setting up a few little bits and pieces in the background. I apologise if I go quiet for a moment or two. I'll jump to the comments straight away. <laughs> just because we, we do, as I say, these quizzes on Facebook a lot of the time. Um, sometimes people, they don't use YouTube that much. So kind of coming to a new platform can be a little bit different. So I'm just setting up a few little links so everyone can find us if they want to kind of come and play along. There we go. Yeah, so this is kind of pretty straightforward anyway, I must say. It's not not complicated. I'm not trying to make it too hard necessarily, but because we've been doing these quizzes for probably maybe a year, maybe a little bit less than a year, I'm not sure. There's only a limit of questions before the the quality or the uh, the the difficulty of the questions has to kind of step up a little bit. So if you were kind of with us maybe about a year ago, you probably would have found this quiz fairly straightforward, but now it's maybe kind of getting a little bit more... A bit more difficult, but a bit more interesting anyway. Uh, well, thank you very much. We got Mrs. Photographer. Thank you so much for jumping into the chat uh, from Miami. Lovely. Um, so it must be kind of afternoon time over there. We're starting to kind of hit the evening time over here in the UK. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm trying to kind of get myself familiar with time zones. <laughs> I didn't realize everywhere changes so much. I just thought the UK had kind of a shifting summer. Um, autumn spring type of uh, time zone but i didn't realize that actually happens um in america as well if, if i'm correct so yeah um hopefully you're having a nice afternoon there anyway and it's nice and sunny it's actually kind of pretty sunny today over here as well which is surprising um right okie doke so we're hitting up to seven o'clock here and that's the time that we said we would begin um uh, obviously people can kind of jump in and come along as they wish and obviously we need to jump out that's totally fine um but yeah this is all it's all kind of gets recorded and stays on youtube so you can always watch it back anyway if you miss any of the questions but effectively you're going to get to use the comments section for this so it's dead simple. If you've never played before, 20 questions, that's all it is. But it's amazing how I can drag 20 questions out for an hour. <laughs> I try my best to kind of keep it kind of uh, fairly short anyway. But um, yeah, it always ends up maybe being about a, a, an hour or so, maybe. We'll see. Um, but yeah, ultimately, just use the comments for all the answers. Uh, you don't need to kind of do anything else for it. We kind of keep it that simple. It's not always a case. Uh, it's not a case of um, being the first is the winner. Um, we always give time as much as we can to allow everybody to answer because I appreciate there's a bit of a lag when you get streams. So there maybe is about 15 seconds or so um, in between my question and then you guys actually hearing it as well. So we kind of give you a little bit of time back to so make sure that you get an opportunity to 
answer. Uh, so kind of use the comments for that. Um, they just do a simple one point per question answer. And it's just ultimately keeping a track of your own score. We tried to do it once where I tried to be score master as well as quiz master and it did not go down well. It it went on for ages did the quiz. It was so hard to keep track of all these things. Um, so yeah, it's just an honesty box thing really is kind of keeping track of it yourself. Um, and yeah, Otherwise, that's it in terms of rules. Do Googling. <laughs> I know you're on YouTube, like the world's swap, second biggest search engine, but if you can kind of hold yourself back from searching for the answers, just give it a go. It's a bit of fun. There's no prizes. You can have a little bit of... Um, a bit of a pri uh, a bit of a, a round of applause at the very end from myself, whoever wins. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's just for fun. This is what we like to do: kind of breaking things up from all the tutorials and lessons uh, that we do over at iPhotography uh, every now and again. So, oh, Peter, thank you very much for coming along. Uh, that's absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for joining in. And anybody else that joins in as we go, uh, just let us know that you're there. That'd be absolutely fantastic. So, otherwise, I think we should kind of start to get going now. We've got a few people kind of jumping on. Uh, I appreciate that. Normally that were live on Facebook, so I've dropped a few links over there. So hopefully anybody that kind of uh, normally kind of finds us playing there um, will hop on over and they may catch us as we go. But otherwise, let's start off. So again, on question one. OK, so I'll read these things out just to make it nice and clear. OK, so which Japanese manufacturer of optics and reprography products has the logo Your Vision, Our Future? I'll say that again because I stumbled a little bit. Which Japanese manufacturer of optics and rep reprography products has the logo Your Vision, Our Future? A logo, maybe a tagline, a saying, mission statement, whatever businesses want to call it these days. But that's that's the statement. Your Vision, Our Future. Which Japanese manufacturer in photography and uses that slogan? Drop your answers into the comments. So say I'll give you a kind of a, a few seconds to do each one because I appreciate there is always a little bit of delay on stream. So it's sometimes be really, really hard and mean for me, but just kind of fire through these straight away. <laughs> so I'll give you the answer to each question as we go so you can kind of remember them uh, much more easily as opposed to going back through all the answers afterwards. So thank you very much for everyone else that's joining along. And Karen, thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, oh, from Seattle. Fantastic. Excellent. Must be, I'd say, around about midday there. I'm not so sure on my, <laughs> on my time zones. We were just talking about that. But thank you so much for coming along. But morning. So, yeah, sorry. You probably are kind of just before lunch. Hopefully you're having a nice day and lovely, wonderful weather. I appreciate that um, Washington State is known as the, the rainy state. Is that right? Or at least a state that sees a lot more rainfall than the rest of the... Uh, mainland US as well. But fingers crossed, it's a nice sunny, warm day for you over there. It is over here today, which is well surprising. It's actually been quite nice for the past two, three weeks, maybe. There'll be, there'll be big rain to come. There'll be a big kind of uh, payoff, <laughs> unfortunately. Come, come autumn, it'll just rain for months. That's all it is. Right, so this is our first question. So throw any any answers that you could possibly think in there. Um, I'm only going to be able to take your first one. You can't load us up with 10 different answers and hope one of them is the right one. But the slogan was, your vision, our future. Which Japanese manufacturer? So many Japanese manufacturers these days in photography. So, yeah, this is maybe not, not the most straightforward one or one that you can easily narrow down to. Oh, it's 11 a.m. over there. OK, sorry. I don't know if you're in a, a different time zone from what I thought. Um, I thought kind of right on the coast, it's PST. I maybe have put that an hour difference, unfortunately, on uh, some of our posts. I thought it was like 12 noon over there. Um, but yeah, kind of throw any answer in that you can think of a camera manufacturer. OK, and we'll move forward. So let's give up the first answer to the first question. Oh, you've had a heat wave over there and you've got a bit of wet. Oh, wet yeah, we had a little bit of wet weather the other day. But it was again, it's only only so short lived and the heat comes in and just tries everything up instantly. You'd never realise it was there. Right. OK, so let's give you an answer to question one about the Japanese manufacturer. It was Olympus. Yes. So that I say little known brand. It's kind of got its popularity. But yeah, when you kind of put it up against the likes of Sony and Nikon and camera, uh, Canon, etc. as well. Yeah, it's kind of forgotten a little bit, unfortunately. Right. So shall we move on to question two? OK, so here we go with question two. Which lens is characterized by the following photographic effect? So a super wide angle with round edges. So what kind of lens sounds like it could 
recreate such an effect. A super wide angle with round edges, you throw it in. So just keep track of your own scores as we go through. There's no way I'm going to be able to kind of keep track of everyone's scores as we play along, I'm afraid. I would do my best, but I may not be absolutely fantastic at it. Like we said, we did it a long time ago and it was another disaster. <laughs> Christina, thank you so much for coming along. Excellent. Oh, yes, you got that one there. Excellent. Yeah, I know there's a little bit of a delay and we're on to question two by now. But yeah, you get a point if you, uh, if you got onto that one. So well done. Jackie, thank you so much for coming along and <laughs> taking your little while to get online. Yeah, I apologise. I don't know if moving platforms just for this month's quiz uh, has thrown people a little bit, but I, I threw some links onto Facebook, so hopefully that was a little bit easier to find us. Um, but yes, there we go. Right, so this is question two. Which lens is characterised by the following photographic effect? Just a super wide angle with a round edge. So what lens sounds like you think would give that type of effect off in an image? Uh, right, yeah, you always have to sign in, um, yeah, to make sure you can kind of participate onto um, onto lives, etc. I think it's just a YouTube thing, isn't it? I had a little panic before because the way that I kind of had to set the the stream up, that I couldn't find a place to put um, some of the details in. I was panicking with about four minutes to go as to whether I was actually going to get online or not. So I need to check these things out more often because we've not we've not streamed to YouTube for about a year and uh, yeah I just started to have a little panic that everything had changed. I had a look at it earlier this afternoon and everything kind of looked kind of fairly straightforward, but I didn't fully test it. Yeah, so you may get a slightly different variations of delay. It it partly just depends upon your internet connection. I think a lot of the time, um, as to kind of how soon you hear it. So that's why I give kind of a. 30 seconds or so for everybody to kind of throw in an answer. So the answer to question one, Jackie, uh, was Olympus. Uh, your vision, your vision, your image, your vision. <laughs> I've forgotten what the actual quote was now. By the way, the answer was Olympus. So let's move on to the answer for question two, which lens is characterized by a uh, following photographic effect, which is a super wide angle with round edges. It's a fisheye lens. So yes, I see quite a few of you in there, Karen, you got that right. Peter, Christina, well done. Any of you that said fisheye, Absolutely fantastic. And used to have a fisheye camera. Actually, that's a lie. I've still got one down here. But I had it. I had like a, a digital adapter for one as well. Um, but this is just like a little um, a Lomo camera. And it has, I mean, the lens itself is fisheye, but it gives this little um, kind of optical viewfinder on the top here. Um, I don't know if you can actually see through that. It will make a difference. Um, but yeah, it kind of gives a really, really cool little uh, fisheye view of the world. It's a fun little uh, 35 mil film camera. Very cute. Right, okay, anyway, sorry, get mixed up. Let's uh, move on to question three. Okay, here's question three. What is the name of a compact version of a prime lens? Okay, so you probably would have heard of this, but not necessarily kind of explaining it like this may kind of make it so obvious. I don't know, let's see. Yeah. Throw your answers into the comments. So what is the name of a compact version of a prime lens? I don't necessarily know why I've kind of put prime in air quotes <laughs> looking back at it, because it kind of suggests that the word prime isn't correct or it has a different meaning. But no, it just means the prime lens. But this is a much more compact version of it. A lot of them are kind of quite compact anyway, really, for like 35 mils or or um, 50 mils more specifically. These tend not to be kind of too wide lenses, maybe around about 28 to 30 mil. These types of lenses that we're referring to here um, are kind of normally available at. But if you're not sure, throw in an answer. Honestly, it's so worth just guessing. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But the amount of times that we've done quizzes and someone's not known, just throwing an answer in by chance um, and got it right, it makes a big difference, especially when these, these quizzes get really competitive over on uh, iPhotography Plus. And um, yeah, we sometimes are literally just like separated by a point and sometimes half a point, sometimes like a third of the point as well. <laughs> we've, we've got into kind of many debates previously over the answers of questions. Photography is such a subjective thing that answers to quizzes can be very subjective as well and, uh, and partial. So we'll see, we've got some answers rolling in. Okay. Karen, honestly, it's absolutely, absolutely worth just having a stab in the dark. 
any maybe any word that you think you've heard be connected to, to lenses previously. Um, you never know. So you may you may not be right, but you never know. Could work out for you. Right. Anyway, let's move on and let's give you an answer to question three. What is the name of a compact version of a prime lens? Pancake lens. So you may have heard of them, and as soon as you Google them, hopefully you get the kind of right type of <laughs> picture of a lens as opposed to actual pancake. Um, but they're very, very kind of physically compacted, very mobile and small and shallow lenses. This is why they're normally not necessarily kind of super wide angle lenses, but maybe around about 25 to 35 mil they can appear at. Um, but they are very, very small. Great for like travel photography, for street photography as well, just because of how light and mobile they are. Um, but yeah, there we go. Pancake lens. Check them out. Very, very unusual. Not necessarily available in a huge range of focal lengths. Um, but I'd say most cameras, them, there must be some sort of variation, maybe some kind of third company making them for most cameras, I would have thought. So anyway, let's move on to question four. So the question is, if C1 appears on a camera dial, what does it mean? If you see uh, the little mark at C1 appearing on a camera dial, maybe it appears in yours, maybe it doesn't. I think, actually, <laughs> the camera that I'm streaming on, that has a C1. I think it has a C2 as well. But what does C mean? What does the letter C mean? It was worth a try, Karen. Honestly, absolutely worth a try. Don't worry. It's something now that we've learned, isn't it? And this is what the kind of the, the quizzes are good for as well, is that, yeah, the, as much as it's all just about having a little bit of fun, having a bit of a laugh, there's sometimes something you learn in there, something you maybe never heard of before. It's cool to know. It's all about learning. So question four is, if C1 appears on a camera dial, what does it mean? Does anybody ever use this function? I don't think I have that often, to be honest, because a lot of my photography changes so often in terms of what I shoot, so therefore obviously you're needing different settings all the time. So necessarily having something like this, I can see the benefits of it and be having a kind of a couple of them is very good. If you are shooting in fixed, type of conditions all the time and your camera kind of stays in one place all the time. Maybe if you were like a, a studio photographer, I think something like uh, this could be very, very useful. I've probably given so much of it away now. If you haven't, if you haven't thought of the answer, <laughs> you probably have got it by now. Now, uh, let's see if we've got any answers rolling in. Hey, one for three. That's absolutely fine. Honestly, I, I, some people get kind of zero for 10, you know, when we get halfway through. So. I think that there's a lot more opportunities. I've split the quiz up. I should have maybe said this at the start. So we've got 20 questions. The first 10 are written questions, as you see in them now. And then the next 10 are based upon uh, iconic, famous uh, images. Um, but the questions themselves may not necessarily be about the photographer or the photograph itself. It may be more about the kind of content of what's going on within the image. Um, so that kind of opens up to a little bit more trivia. So I tend to find people do a little bit better on the second half um, if you've got kind of good general knowledge. Um, so there's a lot more historical aspects to some of those, those pictures, those questions later on. So we'll see how good your history is as well as your photography. Right, okay, anyway, let's move on forward. So, um, right, what does C1 mean? It means custom. Custom one, but yeah, sometimes it may just appear as C. So if you were in custom, custom one, uh, that's absolutely fine. I'll give you a point there. So Peter, you've got a bang on the nose. That's perfect. Well done. Lovely. Excellent. So if anybody else is playing themselves, you don't have to join in in the comments. It's fine. But do let us know if you are watching, if you're enjoying. That's the most important thing. Right. OK, shall we move on to question five? OK, so here's question five for you. This is going to be an interesting one. So I don't care about spelling. As long as I can kind of understand where you're going, um, then that's fine. But question five is, can you describe what a parallax error is? I say, it doesn't need to be war and peace. Um, if you can kind of give me a vague description, so even I know that you're in the right area, then I can kind of issue points that way. Um, but yeah, can you describe what a parallax error is?
Okay, so let's see what we're getting in terms of any answers. Nothing so far. Doesn't have to be war and peace, as I say. Doesn't have to be a superbly complicated. <laughs> Honestly, the, the easier to to, to uh, explain, the better. But yeah, you don't you don't necessarily get this a lot um, with with mirrorless cameras. So you won't get it at all. Some mirrorless cameras you do though. I won't explain necessarily why, because it may give things away a little bit. But certainly the aspect of it being mirrorless and some of the other aspects involved in that is directly affected to the, the parallax, or is not affected by the parallax error. Um, but DSLRs, certainly um, some of the older DSLRs, even some of the newer ones now, um, definitely could have that type of issue. It was more of a thing kind of with older cameras, um, you know, with cameras maybe back in, well, actually, some of the cameras here, actually, yeah, certainly most of the cameras, this little one down here, this Diana one that we've got there, yeah, they, they will have the parallax error, and I'll explain why in a second. Um, let's see what we've got. Just also answering a few comments over on Facebook as well. A few people kind of can't seem to jump onto the stream or at least comment on it, but I think you simply just because you've got to uh, be logged in, as someone was saying before, uh, which you just simply log in through your normal Google account if you've got like a Gmail account or any standard Google account. Right, okay, let's give you an answer to what parallax error is, and I'll do my best to explain and not bore anybody. It's dead simple. Here we go. I've even got a picture that I found. But a parallax error is when the object in scene appears differently between the optical viewfinder and the camera lens. So as you can see from the picture there, what you actually see through the viewfinder is higher up than what the lens would see. So it gives you that kind of error of uh, perspective between the two. So as I say, my camera's here, they have them. So you've got your optical viewfinder here, but your lens itself is down here. So what you see through the back of it, see through the camera is at one level, but the picture is actually being taken at a slightly lower level, and that disparity is known as parallax error. I say mirrorless cameras don't really have it these days because um, the viewfinder that you look through is an electronic viewfinder, and that takes the image exactly from what the lens sees, so there's no disparity between the two. So hopefully it doesn't kind of it's, it's not too complicated. That's kind of pretty straightforward. There's there's loads of science and bits behind it, I'm sure, but let's just kind of keep it super simple in respect to sort of what it actually is. Um, but yeah, there we go. Anyway, that's kind of effectively kind of parallax error is another thing that we've learned. Right, let's move forward on to question six. Um, and this is one that if you are an iPhotography Plus member um, on one of our recent webinars, maybe a couple of months ago, this is a term that you may have heard of. But what is working distance? Now, this working distance applies across all areas of photography, but it's a particular area that we were looking at a little while ago. Um, with, uh, with our webinars, and it was something that is kind of quite prominent in a certain area in macro photography. So I don't think that's necessarily going to give anything away there, but can you explain what working distance is? Again, it doesn't have to be super complicated, long, big sentences, etc. But just let us know what you think working distance is. And I'll take this moment of opportunity to explain that if anybody's enjoying the quiz, hopefully you are, and if you're not an iPhotography member already, then obviously it'd be lovely to have you. You can check us out at iPhotography.com. We've got courses, training, memberships, tons of different things that are going on there. Um, so if you're a new photographer, you know, if even if you've kind of had a camera for a little while and you've started to kind of lose the motivation, the inspiration, and you want to get it back a little bit. Maybe you used to take photographs years ago uh, and you just kind of want to get back into the game a little bit with the digital camera, then honestly, please do check us out. We've got a free course. We've got loads of paid courses. We've got memberships that you can take on. Pretty much anything that you would want that we, we can offer in one way or another. Um, but iPhotography.com, you can find us there. And if you really, really enjoy the quizzes, then on our monthly membership on iPhotography Plus, if you upgrade, um, then we've got quizzes like this every month that we do on our Facebook group. And we've got webinars, we've got photo critique videos that we do twice a month as well. Um, so please, yeah, definitely worth checking us out if you really, really want to kind of take your photography to the next step and just do something a little bit different. It's great to also meet the fantastic members that we've got. They're so talented. Everybody starts off as a beginner and becomes so creative and, and so professional so quickly. 
it's absolutely amazing to see. So it's, it's absolutely wonderful community to be a part of if you're looking to find a new photography club. Because I know so many of them closed down during COVID and never just really got restarted because a lot of a lot of this kind of moved online. So let's see, have we got any kind of answers coming in? We've got one or two questions, uh, one or two answers streaming in. Let me just make sure that anybody that's looking to find us. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully the kind of these guys are able to find us anyway. Right. OK, let's have a look, see what we've got in respect to answers. <laughs> Explains why a lot of it had to cut off in the 70s. Yeah, maybe the parallax there is to just, is to kind of uh, is to explain for that. It could happen if you've got your head, if you've got the people's heads kind of quite close to the uh, the top of the frame, then yeah, definitely good answer. So the space between the object and the lens, let's see. Oh no, you broke your UV filter on your macro lens, misjudging this. Right, okay, it sounds like you may have an answer there. So this is the distance between the front of your lens and your subject or point of focus, whatever you want to refer to it as. So there you go. So I think, yeah, a couple of you have got that there. Definitely Christina saying the space between the object and the edge of the lens. Jackie, the distance to the front of the lens, front of the camera. Yeah, I'll give you that, Jackie. It's the lens, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose you always expect the lens and the camera to be connected, don't you? Um, so yeah, I'll give you a point on that one. And Karen said, because you simply because you even just broke your UV filter doing this or misjudging the working distance, you've got to have a point for that. I'll cheer you up a little bit. Right, let's move on to question seven. Um, I'll try and speed up a little bit. I'm always kind of, this is what I told you, I can make seven questions drag out over 25 minutes. All right, number seven, let's move forward. What is the primary source of light called in a photograph? So if you had a one light source, even if you have multiple, but what is the primary source of light in a photograph called? It has a specific name or maybe two specific names. You can use one or the other. They're very rarely used as a, as a dual name or such. What is the name? What's the primary source of light called in a photograph? It's, it's very, very straightforward, this one, I would say. <laughs> you can be very basic with terminology and photography sometimes. That's all we're looking for. I told you we mix up the quality and the, the difficultness of questions. And trying a new little setup here as well with the different camera angles, lighting, etc. Let me know if it works. I'm hoping that the actual quality of the stream looks a little bit better as well for that basis. So anything we can do to improve streams, image quality, etc. Always trying to look to do. It's a cool little setup here. Spent a little while getting backdrop lighting, etc. Correct myself an actual workstation as opposed to working on a laptop on my knees. Not the most conducive. I'll let you know if anybody has to work from home um, these days. Adaptation has been absolutely key to trying to adapt your house to uh, suit your work needs, especially this job. There's so much diversity in respects to what we do. So having a space that can kind of change with uh, all the different filming bits and pieces that we have to do um, is very, very important. So throw your answers into the comments. What is a primary source of light called in a photograph? So what have we got? We've got an answer so far in there from Christina. Karen's brain's turned to mush. Never mind. <laughs> you'll kick yourself. You'll, you'll know this one for sure, Karen. I know you will. You, you know a lot. Uh, right, let's move forwards anyway. So let's see. Audrey, thank you so much for joining along. Don't worry that you're late at all. Honestly, I've managed to drag seven questions out for 25 minutes. So we're not even halfway. So you can jump in as soon as you see the questions on there. Just throw your answers in the comments. Um, I think one or two people have had trouble trying to comment on the live stream. Um, just simply need to be logged in. That's all it is. It's just a YouTube thing. They just want you to be logged in. Um, so they can um, so you can actually comment through your account. Anyway, let's answer question seven. Is main or key? Whichever you want to say, never use together, but main light or a key light, it's as simple as that. So well done, Christina, you got that there. Well done for you. Keeping track of your own scores, guys, because we'll when we get to halfway, 
in a couple of questions. We'll just do a little bit of a, a score check and see where everyone's up to, see who's in front. So number eight, what is the name given to pre-occurring light in a photo that hasn't been arranged by the photographer? So I'll read that one again, because it's a little bit of a long one. What is the name given to pre-occurring light in a photo that hasn't been arranged by the photographer? And what we mean by that is that we, we haven't kind of brought in a specific light you know, for, for a photograph. Pre-existing light, I think is probably the best term for that's given. So what is the name given to pre-occurring or pre-existing light in a photo? So two questions about light there. Let me try to mix things up so we don't have like a particular theme or a run of questions that are very similar. I think I might have to miss that one. I'm sorry. But again, I don't think it's one that's going to tax many people too much. Sometimes you, you will, you'll know it. It's just locking that answer <laughs> into your conscious mind. It will be there. There's so much to learn about photography. So much to learn. It takes years. You still don't know it all, honestly. There's still so many things I don't know about photography, but it's just it's just the way it is. And this is why kind of refreshing your memory, refreshing training every now and again is so useful, whether it's through books, tutorials, going on workshops, anything like that, all very, very useful. So throw your answers into the comments um, for this one. So this is the name of pre-existing light that hasn't been arranged by a photographer. See, there we go. Okay, let's give you an answer to question eight. It was ambient light. So I'm sure I saw that somewhere. Karen, well done. We had incidental or ambient. I suppose, yeah, well, incidental is more just about kind of direction or readings, isn't it? You've got ambient light there. Have a point. Audrey, you've got it as well. Fantastic. Good start. Straight in there. Well done. Right. So you both get points there. That's brilliant. Anybody else that's watching, it's playing along themselves. Well done. If you've got ambient light, let's move on to question nine, 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 nine. So the question is, what does EV stand for? EV, Echo Victor. Forgot what they are on the, uh, on the phonetic scale. It's L, Echo, yeah, Echo Victor. I think I am right. It's just a guess. Let me know. Anyway, what does EV stand for? This is in photography. I'm not talking about the phonetic alphabet. Don't get confused with that. <laughs> I didn't say you cheated, Karen. <laughs> you were surmising, I think. I think you were thinking out loud. Is, is that what it was, maybe? And you <laughs> typing out loud? <laughs> you can have a point. That's absolutely fine. So we've got one more question after this, another written question, and then we shall move on to our picture round. So we've got 10 pictures to go through, 10 kind of iconic, famous images. Some you may be familiar with, some you may not, but sometimes you may not necessarily even need to know the image to maybe answer the question. So they're a little bit more trivia based. Some of them, I think some of them are more photographic. Can't remember. We've done so many of these. <laughs> We have got a few of our quizzes saved, I think, as well, um, over on our I Photography Media Library as well. So if anybody's a member and wants to have a look back at them, uh, I think possibly they're available. But obviously, if you're a Plus member, um, you'll have access to all the quizzes that we've done previously. I think probably over the past maybe year, I'm going to guess. I think we've been doing them that long. We've probably got quite a few anyway. I'm sure I've got an archive of them somewhere. You can watch them back. But if you are enjoying them, obviously going forward, we do them every month. We'll be back on iPhotography Plus next month doing this quiz uh, in the private Facebook group. So let's see, we've got a number of answers coming through. We've got about meter in exposure value, electric vehicle. <laughs> we'll see how that one goes down, Karen, well done. But number nine, the answer was exposure value. So well done to everybody that got that. Christina again, Jackie, well done. You've nailed that. There. Fantastic. Right. OK, let's get to our halfway point. So this is question 10 out of 20. So number 10, 
In photography, where would you commonly find an enlarger? Please, ladies and gentlemen, be careful with your answers here. This is a family friendly quiz. Um, but number 10 is in photography, where would you commonly find an enlarger? Maybe you've heard of them, maybe you've not at all. It's a little bit old school, if that kind of helps to some degree in respects to um, these days, it's more of a niche as to kind of when you would use it, given how photography has changed a lot over the years. But where would you commonly find an enlarger? And a shout out to our photography members. If you would like to know, you, you're literally going to get the, a matter of maybe about 12 hours <laughs> kind of a head start somewhat uh, on our weekend challenge. This is a challenge that we issue every Friday to the iPhotography community. Um, and we give a, a photo theme, just a, a word sometimes. Sometimes it's a theme, sometimes it's a couple of words, whatever it may be. Um, and we're basing that kind of around our flip photography competition over the weekend. So if you want to know what the weekend challenge is going to be tomorrow, stick around towards the end. Remind me, somebody, and I will let you know. I'll have a look down my list because I can't remember. We have so many. Um, right, OK, that's be a cool one. Right, so where we see we've got a number of answers in there. Everybody's pretty much going in the same direction, and you are all correct. So well done again, Audrey. Two out of two there, aren't you? That's fantastic. Christina, you must be leading the pack now, are you? We'll do a bit of a score check. Right, if you can write your scores down in the comments, we're out of 10. How many that you've got correct so far? We're just working on the honesty system, so you guys are honest. I know you'll uh, you not come out with a 10 out of 10. I don't think anybody's got 10 out of 10 so far. I think there was one or two questions where... We didn't get any answers in there. So let us know where you are up to in terms of your scores, guys. That'd be absolutely fantastic. Um, right, so let me just have a quick drink for a second. Right, where are we up to? Okay, we're a couple of minutes behind, but I think our pitch around will probably go a little bit quicker. So let's see, we'll get some scores in quickly. Christina's on seven, well done. Peter on three, well done. That's very, very good. Honestly, don't, don't kind of compare yourself to others on here because even in putting some together, some of these questions, sometimes I look at them, especially in the picture round, you're like, I didn't know the story behind that or this, that, or the other. So, yeah, I, I I would never get to like 10 or 20 or anything like that. Jackie got four. Well done. Very, very good. I think Audrey must be on two now. Just looking back because you joined a little bit later. I think you've got them both right. The ones that you have joined in on those as well. So well done. Um, excellent. Right. OK, so let's move forward. Christina is ahead. Right. So now we are on 10 iconic photos. And as I said, the questions may not necessarily be about the uh, photographer. It may be more about the kind of content of the image. So it may seem a bit more like trivia. Right. OK. I think you've got probably got at least two, Karen. At least two, I must say. I haven't been keeping track, I'm afraid, but certainly there's, there's a couple that I can remember. Right, anyway, let's see how you get on with this second half of the quiz. So this question 11. In which US river did this plane crash land? So apologies for the image quality. This was the best that I could find. I don't necessarily think there were professional photographers set up the state to kind of shoot these images. Uh, so you just get what you get, I'm afraid, on the internet. But in which US river did this plane crash land? So they went on to make a film about the story, uh, which Tom Hanks appeared in, um, appeared as the pilot, I think it was. I've forgotten what the gentleman's name was, the, the pilot of the plane. But it was an absolute miracle that, that they lost both engines. Um, I think birds had flown into the engines. Um, sorry to panic anybody to start saying this if they're about to go on holiday this summer, but planes flew into the engines uh, and the engines stopped working. So he actually kind of had to crash land the plane. Uh, and he did it wonderfully. Um, you know, no, not many injuries or very few injuries and certainly no, no fatalities. Everybody survived. Crash landed in a river in the US. So can anybody let us know what the river is? Well, you're on three currency. Brilliant. There you go. You're tied with Peter there. Very good. Let's see how you get on in this picture round. So throw your answers in as to where we are here. 
you know what river the crash landed in. See where we're up to. Okay. Okay. Oh, quite a few of you have gone with the same answer here. Let's see. Are you correct? It was the, indeed the Hudson, the Hudson River in New York. Well done. Okay. So well done. Everybody's got a pretty much a point there. It's been playing long. That's great. Right. So number 12. In what year did this lady get married? Hopefully the image quality is good enough that you can actually see who it is. You have to bring your phone, tablet, laptop really close to you. <laughs> Don't want to give too much away by saying the name. So I thought I'd leave it a little bit open. But in what year did this lady get married? You said not to compare yourself. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Three is a good score. Well, you're actually on four now, aren't you? Four is better than three. So well done. So in what year did this lady get married? Surprisingly, a lot longer ago than I thought it was. But I think it's just a case, certainly over the past couple of years, years have just merged into one. It still feels like 2019. Everything kind of, you know, it's kind of pre-COVID, everything that's happened kind of in between as that is just, just merged into one block. You didn't actually see years appear. So let's see. So just have a guess, honestly, because you know it's going to be a year. No fairly recent-ish year, 21st century at least. So just throw a year in, see you get close. You never know. It's one of those kind of questions that it's like a shot in the dark if you didn't, uh, you didn't watch uh, the wedding or anything like that. So we'll just see how we get on. So you're all kind of going into a similar ballpark, yeah, somewhere between 210 and 215. Okay, okay, let's give it a moment. Anybody else that's playing? I said, I know there is a little bit of a lag sometimes on, on streams. This can't be helped. This is just the way the technology goes. It's never instant, I'm afraid. Okay, look, let's give you an answer because quite a few of you are throwing some in there. What year does ladies get married? This lady is the Duchess of Cambridge. It will be a future Queen of England um, or Queen Consort, possibly. I'm not sure what the titles will be. Either way, Kate Middleton, as a lot of people know her, is 2011. I'm not a big royalist either. It was just a picture that happened to come up and I thought, oh, I'm sure somebody else will know the answer to this. By the way, if you've got 2011, let me have a look through. Ah, Jackie, spot on. Absolutely spot on. Well done there. Well done. Excellent. So you get a point there, Jackie. So let's move on to question 13. Right now, this is a little bit different. This is this is kind of things that I learned from because I didn't know who this was, the story behind this lady, etc. But very interesting. Uh, question 13. Who is this woman and what is her significance? So even if you give me one part of the answer, you can get a point from it. Maybe there could be a bonus point if you can get both parts. That would be amazing. Let's see. Anyway, so who is this woman and what is her significance? Hopefully the the gear that she's wearing, the helmet, and give it too much away, um, will help you in the right direction in terms of giving an answer here. We'll see. You're a big royalist, Jackie. I, I love watching the um, uh, the Crown on Netflix. I've watched that kind of numerous times. Uh, I, I love a lot of kind of real life dramas, or, you know, dramas and films that are kind of based upon real life. Um, not so much documentaries, but when they're kind of more uh, cinematic in a way, I think they're absolutely fantastic. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to the to the next season of that one. I think it got delayed a little bit because of COVID, unfortunately. But yeah, the absolutely fantastic season uh, series to watch if you've never watched it before. Right, so let me see. We've got some answers rolling in. The first one went in space. 
first lady to the moon. I love that you're all being so different with your terminologies, lady and woman. <laughs> first woman to the moon. You kind of, obviously, you're all going in a similar direction, a somewhat a correct direction. If anybody's got any names, that'd be very, very good. Was she Russian? I don't think so, but we'll find out with her answer. <laughs> okay, so we've got a good few answers rolling in already. So let's get on with an answer so I don't take up all of your day. Number 13, who is this woman and what is her significance? Her name is Anna Fisher and she's the first mother in space, 1984. So I don't think anyone's got a particular name. We had a lot of first women to the moon or first women in space. I don't think she was the first woman in space. She was the first mother uh, in particular in space. And that's 1984. So you're all very, very close. Very, very close indeed. But I don't think anybody's got the biscuit on that one. OK, let's move forward to number 14 now. OK, we have, this is probably maybe a little bit more easier. Let's see. Number 14, from which war was this photograph taken? This may be an image that you've seen before, possibly. Um, so it was taken at a particular battle within a war. Um, if you want to be really specific and give me the battle, obviously brilliant. Um, but if not, the actual overall war itself, if you can give me an answer on that one, that would be fantastic. Now I'll try and find out for you in the meantime who the first woman in space was. OK, so it was a Russian or the first woman in space, not the first mother, but it was cosmonaut Valentina Tereshkova uh, in 1963. My word. It's like nearly 20 years before um, uh, Sally Fisher. So Sally Fisher? Got the name now. <laughs> yeah, she was the first woman in space. But yeah, her answer was the first mother in space. That's crazy. It is absolutely random, isn't it? The, the things I find. But as I said, we've been doing these quizzes for, what, about a year? So it's like maybe about like 12 quizzes um, and we're doing like 20 questions. There's like 240 uh, questions. <laughs> we're going to run out after a while and our uh, attention will have to turn to more, slightly more complicated, <laughs> or maybe slightly more obscure images. But yeah, if you have to kind of get yourself a, a good photography history book, especially for when it comes around to the pitch around, Get yourself familiar with a lot of the backstory with these images. Definitely worthwhile hunting around some charity shops. You find so many great um, photography books in charity shops. It's still kind of relevant in terms of their the teachings, um, but they're super cheap. And sometimes it's just nice to have kind of these, I used to call them coffee table art books, where they are just literally you know, like magazines or big kind of um, novellas of Lots of iconic and um, interesting images that are just great for a little bit of inspiration you know, as you're just browsing through. Um, I found them kind of so, so useful uh, as a photographer just for, for ideas, you know, and, and just understanding the world a little bit more. Right. So let's see what we've got. We've got a mix of answers. We've got a couple of you going with World War II, a couple of people going with Vietnam. All right. OK. Who is correct? Anyone? It was our World War II bunch, so well done to Jackie, Audrey, Christina. Um, yes, this is uh, an image of, I think it's a Russian soldier um, in the Battle of Kursk in 1943. So yeah, if you said World War II, that's it. Who is the first father in space? Ooh, I don't know. Uh, again, I think the first person in space was Russian as well, so let's find out. Um, first father. Oops, spell it right. Other in space. Um, oh, yes, other Russian. Oh, I don't know pronounce his name. Konstantin uh, Tisol, Tisolkovsky. Tisolkovsky. Um, hang on. Can that be right? Because it said he died in 1935. So how did he go to space before that? He <laughs> didn't go to space then. Oh, hang on. I think it's something to do about being the father of space travel. Um, first... Hmm. 
that is not a straightforward answer, unfortunately. I get the fathers of space flight, like the founders, but the actual who was the first. Um, yeah. How odd that it's not such a straightforward question. Not a straightforward answer, I'm afraid. I can't give you an answer on that one. Anyway, let's go back to our quiz. We don't take up all your time, as I say today. Let's move on to question 15. We've got a few more to go. What was this photo celebrating specifically? So you may recognize the celebration, the location, but this, this photo was taken specifically to celebrate a specific event, landmark, whatever you want to say. But can anybody let us know what it was? Uh, if you've not joined iPhotography before on YouTube, then we very much appreciate you guys giving us a big like, a subscribe, certainly. We've got tons of videos um, on our channel already, and we kind of put uh, a couple of videos out. I'll try to put a couple of videos out every couple of months. Every couple of months. A couple of videos every month, even. I think there's a couple of new ones that have gone out today with our top 10. Um, so these are like the best images that have come out from the gallery um, over the past uh, four weeks. So that, I think, went out maybe a day or two ago. And I think today, maybe, um, there's been another little highlights video um, from a Cloudscape competition that we were doing with Plus members recently, which is really, really cool. So it's an opportunity to have a look at some of the really, really strong images in the and see the overall winning image. So yeah, definitely kind of check out our previous videos. We very much appreciate it. So this is number 15. Have you got any answers in here? What was this photo celebrating specifically? It was the Millennium. This is why the image quality was appalling. <laughs> Digital cameras at that time, they were bad. They were bad. Um, so let's see, did anybody get that there? Christina, you've got it on the nose. Um, Peter, you've got it. Audrey, you're kind of in the right ballpark, but yeah, I think that's why I had to put specific, specifically in there because it looked like it could have possibly been any New Year's Eve because um, they have amazing celebrations in Sydney there, don't they? And Jackie, well done, well done. Okay, so couple of you got points there so let's move on to number 16. Okay what were these people watching? Sounds a very very odd question or a odd, odd way to phrase it but I don't want to give too much away um, but yeah the fact that they're all engrossed in something or other I thought could potentially make kind of an interesting question on this so number 16 what were these people watching? So yeah, keep your answers coming into the comments. That'd be lovely. And for Plus members, if you're watching, we should be back in our normal Facebook group for September's quiz. So yeah, I know we've hopped around a little bit uh, on our Facebook page and also onto YouTube today for the quiz. Just some fun to mix things up for a little while, but we should be back in our Plus group, our Facebook group for um for september's quiz so we got any answers got a couple of answers i think rolling in the screen moves so fast i need to kind of just scroll up and down to think of the same there we go right okay right let's see where we're going okay so number 16 what were these people watching here is the answer is Operation Neptune Spear, which is also the killing, capturing, killing. They don't really kind of capture him, not alive anyway, um, of Osama bin Laden. So, yes, known as Operation Neptune Spear. I didn't know that. I had to Google it. Um, so do we get any correct answers to capturing bin Laden? Christina, well done. Audrey, you got it there. Excellent. Peter, Boris Johnson, <laughs> I'm going to keep out of the politics, man. <laughs> Um, well done. 
very, very well done. Excellent. Okay, so a couple of you got answers there. That's great. Right, let's move on. We've got a couple more to go just within time. I'm almost, almost on time. So here's an image. This is Billy Stinson. Billy Stinson comforts his daughter on the steps of their home destroyed by which natural disaster? This is an absolute heartbreaking image. And as I said, sometimes the, the, the questions aren't necessarily about the, the photograph, the photographer, but the, the content of it. But Billy Stinson comforts his daughter on the steps of their home destroyed by which natural disaster? Anybody's got any uh, yeses in there? You throw them in. It's just an incredible image, isn't it, really? And taking it like the context of everything and how there is just literally no house, there is just steps. And it's these kind of images I, I think kind of make National Geographic and like Time magazine and they, they just pick up popularity from their uh, their reverence this is amazing yeah I didn't that's the thing that I learned Karen I didn't know that that um, operation had a name but I, I, I literally had to to google it because I, I figured that there would always be some sort of kind of name for that they always there's always some sort of military name or operation for anything. Just go for a walk, they'll give it a name. Um, but yeah, Neptune Spear. I don't necessarily know how it connects or the relevance of it. Um, I saw, I don't know if you've ever, if you're into movies or such, there's a film called Zero Dark Thirty, um, which is a film that's basically about the, the whole kind of um, capturing and killing uh, of Osama bin Laden. Um, that's a really, really good. I think that's like, that was an Oscar winning film. I think it was. Um, I think it's still on Netflix. Um, but yeah, yeah, very, very kind of interesting. Uh, right, so let's see. What have we got? Well, we got some answers rolling in. There we go. I missed those. Apologies. Right, so this is yeah, Billy Simpson's comforting his daughter on the steps of their home, destroyed by which natural disaster? Okay, here we go. Let me give you an answer. Number 17, this was Hurricane Katrina. I've forgotten what year Hurricane Katrina was. Was it like 2009? Was it maybe even earlier than that? Yeah, it kind of feels kind of quite a long time ago, but also at the same time not because of how much it impacted um, still being felt today. Um, but anyway, let's move on. Number 18. Here we go. Whose funeral is being presided over in this photo? So take the whole image in. There will be kind of little clues in there, which I think will help if you're not sure at all. But whose funeral is being presided over in this photo? So well done to those of you that got Katrina. Um, so that's Christina, you got it. Audrey, you got it again. Audrey, have you got any wrong? Well, I suppose you got New Year's. I'm just looking back up on the to chat that he got New Year's it wasn't the millennium specifically. Maybe that's one that you didn't get, possibly. I'm being harsh. And I know you joined late. <laughs> but you're obviously nailing all the others, so well done. It's 2005, was it? Oh my days. Oh, it's like 17 years. It's incredible. I, I've not been to South America, South, South of America, South of the US. Um, I've never been there before, but um, I have family that have been there and they said there's, there's still, um, you know, marks of the disaster, disaster is not kind of fully recovered in some places. Um, you know, even after 17 years, it's incredible how much damage nature can do. So let's see. We've got, oh, we've got answers. Oh, I don't think anyone's going to get this wrong, are you, by the looks of it? So whose funeral is being presided over? In this photo, it was Nelson, Man Nelson Mandela. I didn't know if the colours of the beautiful South African flag had given it away. Or if you all just recognise Winnie Mandela in the forefront there. Well done anyway to everybody that got Nelson Mandela. It was Christina, Peter, Jackie, Karen, Audrey. All of you picking up a point there. Absolutely fantastic. Right, OK, let's move on. We've got two more left in the image. Um, right. Who is the actress being attacked at the Cannes Film Festival? So who is the actress being attacked at the Cannes Film Festival? I'm looking for the lady in the white dress. The lady behind, the blonde lady um, with like the little red brooch, I think it's Kate Blanchett. But I don't want her, I want the lady in front. 
she was absolutely fine. I had to actually go and watch a video of this to make sure it wasn't like a severe thing or anything like that, uh, that, you know, she was actually injured. Um, but as you can see, there's like a million security guards jumped in the sky before kind of he got anywhere close to her pretty much. Um, so she, yeah, she was absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, not nice, that kind of thing. Not nice at all. But it's just these little momentary photographs where people kind of catch people just in these little moments that, that some people are completely oblivious, like the gentleman in the end here on the right hasn't got a clue what's going on. Everybody else is very much kind of uh, taken aback by it. And then you've got photo uh, photographers in the background who are you know capturing images, like obviously the ones that we're seeing there. Um, and only a kind of couple of people looking to actually help. A bit sad in a way. Anyway, um, can I give you a hand? Can I give you a clue? I don't really know many films that she's been in. That sounds really bad. I don't even know actually why she was at Cannes Film Festival. <laughs> I should have looked into that and give you an answer for the film. I know one TV program, or two TV programs that she was in, one very, very famous one. That may be too much a giveaway. I don't know. So a few of you not sure on this one. That's fine. No, nope. okay, a few of you I think you're gonna pass, no problems, don't worry at all. This lady is also known as Ugly Betty, who is also America Ferreira. Yeah, America Ferreira, you'll see her in Ugly or you would have seen her in Ugly Betty growing up. And then she was in Superstore. That's the only other thing I've seen her in. I'm sure she's done loads of great things. Um, but yeah, that's just the two that I remember her from. Anyway, that's America Ferreira. So last question. Have you had fun? And we're just within time. So glad, so glad I stuck within time today. Right, number 20. At what event in September 2010 did Lady Gaga wear the iconic meat dress? Yes, the iconic meat dress. Um, I just can't get over what's on her head. It just literally looks like a steak. Um, I know there's art in this fashion, but th this is a statement piece anyway. <laughs> whether it's art or whether it's fashion, I'm not sure. That's a subjective thing, but it certainly is eye-catching and therefore made the, um, the image iconic or the moment iconic. But I'm looking for the event, the name of the event in September 2010 that Lady Gaga did this were the iconic meat dress. So if you can give me the name of the event, that's all I'm looking for. And then as soon as you've done that, uh, sorry, so yeah, once I've given you the answer, obviously, um, if you can throw your scores into the comments out of 20. I know some of you have joined late, so that's absolutely fine. Meat is not art or fashion. <laughs> Tasty. <laughs> I apologise if any vegans or vegetarians are watching. Um, but yes, I certainly agree. I don't believe it is um, fashion or art. I'm sure there'll be a very good explanation for whoever created this to describe it as art, but it is very subjective, and I'm sure someone will really appreciate that. But it's given us a talking point, and it's given us an image for our quiz. That's what we care about. <laughs> right. Had you never heard of the meat dress before, Karen? This this is very much it's almost in modern day celebrity folklore. Um, if, I suppose if you follow music and the popular arts, etc., then you may have heard of it before. Oh, Peter, how were you so on point with this? The opening of a new Smithfield market. I hear Lady Gaga, she attends every week. She's down there, early doors, with the trades, getting a packs of sausages, you know, smoky bacon. Loves that kind of thing she does. <laughs> right, okay, we've we got a few... We've got a few answers in there. Yeah, we've got a mix of answers in there. Anybody else wants to throw an answer in? I'll give you another 10 seconds. Right, okay, let's wrap this up, give you an answer here. We're just clocking past our time. In 2010, it was the MTV Awards. Did I see MTV anywhere? I feel like it. Did. Oh, yeah, there go, Christina. Oh, fantastic spot on there. Even with the question mark, I'll lie that one. So MTV Awards, indeed. Very well done, guys. Excellent. OK, so that's the end of our quiz. So for anybody that's been watching, anybody that's interested in what we've been doing, 
just to let you know, if you want to check out iPhotography, you can do it at iPhotography.com. We've got a whole range of courses, ones that are accredited, and a whole range of opportunities to get kind of photos, uh, feedback. We've got a fantastic gallery, as many of the people in our comments will, will vouch. Uh, it's a great place for inspiration and motivation. Absolutely fantastic place to be getting feedback on your photos as well every now and again. Uh, and we've got a membership to increase all those uh, perks and those products as well. Um, and you can check it out. Go to iPhotography.com and you'll have all the bits and pieces that you need there, guys. But thank you so much for watching for everybody that has. Um, so anyone that's been playing in the comments, if you can just let us know what your score was out of 20. I know some of you joined in a little bit later. That's absolutely fine. So if you let me know out of 20 what your top score was. And we will see who we've got as a winner at the end of all this. So Karen, uh, are you saying that you think Christina's a winner? <laughs> you were doing quite well in the first half. I didn't fully keep track of everybody in the second half, I'm afraid. Um, so yeah, and honestly, Christina guessing is is the best way to go about these things. Absolutely promise you. Um, if you don't know, throwing in the guess. If that last question was a guess, it may be in the way, difference between winning and losing. Let's see, Audrey, you got uh, seven out of 13. That's really, really respectable. Very, very well done for, you know, only joining in halfway through. Well done. Uh, so, Christina, you got 14 out of 20. Uh, Peter, you got six. They don't, it's not an ODA, don't worry. Let's say some of these I, I never knew the answers to. You know, I'm, I'm making this quiz up. It's all learning points. I think even if you want to go back to some of the older quizzes are probably still available um, over on the Plus Members Facebook group and maybe even on iPhotography's media library, there may be one or two stashed in there. Uh, but we'll be doing another one next month. Maybe we can go back to the older ones, like the very, very early ones, uh, and maybe try them again, see if anybody really remembers any of the, uh, the answers and the questions. Um, oh, Jackie, you got 11 out of 20. Very, very well done. You pushed pretty close. Um, so is it just Karen? Are you going to throw an answer in there, Karen? Um, you were up to about three or four a long time ago, so I don't know how many more we got. Oh, see, so oh, you got you got a few more. Six out of twenty. Well done. So yeah, I think you're probably right, Christina. You came first. Very, very well done, Jackie. Uh, not far distant second. Um, Audrey, you may have not been a million miles away, pro rata. <laughs> so well done there. But brilliant, guys. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure playing along. Thanks for uh, for hopping along and staying for the time. Um, it's been really, really good fun. So nice to do it on a different platform, but we'll be back on iPhotography Plus Facebook group next month um, for that. I say if you are a Plus member, watch out for our critique that's going to be coming up um, next week the end of next week or the week after i think it is maybe another 10 11 days isn't it until the 15th um so that's all about food photography so if you're getting your images into the gallery or using the dropbox links that will be up on facebook group um you can upload there as well if you wanted to um but we're back live again only for i photography plus members this month doing our bracketing and hcr photography webinar on the 24th i think it is of um of this month I think it's the 24th, not the 22nd. Yeah, it's the 24th. Um, so, yeah, please do join us for that. And that will always be on our Facebook Plus group anyway. But thank you so much for everyone that's been watching. And um, if you've been playing in the comments, that thank you so much for joining in. Um, so, Peter, Jackie, Karen, Audrey, Christina. Um, it's been absolutely lovely having you guys along. So, thank you so much for joining. It's been absolutely great. And I'll catch you in the next quiz. See you soon. Bye for now.